My name is Carrie De Silva Cox, and I'm an artist in New York City. Um, my background is Brazilian and Irish American. Um, I was born in New Jersey and lived in Brazil for a while as a kid, raised in Connecticut. I've lived in Florida, I went to school in Scotland, but the longest place I've lived is New York City. Um, altogether, I've been here for about 15 years. And my background impacts the way I see the world in that I was raised speaking two languages, so thinking with two sides of the brain and exposed to different cultures really young. Um, I learned Spanish also kind of growing up through high school and work and just living in New York. And I think it's impacted my work in terms of my interests and I guess a fascination with culture um, and music also as a universal language. So I think really early on I realized that the experience of performance and music and shows and the ability to be kind of emotive is something that transcends language and using color and form and people and um, paint or performance or different kinds of materials to elicit a reaction or convey a particular feeling was something that was really appealing to me um, very early on. So I think also themes that are kind of non-specific to cultures in a way are interesting and also things that are kind of uniquely American in some ways I think you'll find in my work like recently I've been really interested in concerts and performers and while I listen to a wide array, array of music and things like that I think the images I'm capturing are probably pretty American. Um, I'm interested in rock and hip-hop and opera. I have a bit of a dance background, um, so elements of performance, the way things look on stage, lighting, form, the body, all of that stuff um, is really interesting to me. And I think I fell in love with kind of portraiture at a very early age, so whether that's like depicting a person or the physicality of a person, kind of the structure of the face. I, I really love all of that. Um, and it's something that I never really get tired of doing. My biggest influences, um, you know, at this point, I mainly consider myself a painter, or I guess I should say right now, but um, my influences come from all different kinds of places. So I really like like I said, music, I get really into like arrangement and production and thinking about the way that things are put together. I read the Tao of Wu when I was in art school and Riza really describes music and the way that music is produced in a, in a way that makes sense to all areas of life. Like if you've ever made a song, you know, sometimes I've worked on music before you can see it in sort of curves and lines like you can visualize a song and I think you can do that with painting and performance and kind of any area of your life like it should have like a, a bass or a melody or um, different ranges of sounds like things on the high end and the low end um, and if you're choosing not to do that to make kind of a broad scape of things it's kind of an intentional choice so I, that influences me in my work, musicians, producers, um, and the creative process. I read, I like to read, I like writing, I like the way that people write. Um, that's also always been kind of interesting to me. I'm definitely someone who's more interested in biographies and nonfiction, I think, than literature, although magical realism is definitely, like, as a part Latin American, something that's kind of, like, inherent to my identity so um, I guess that connects to the surrealists in a way you know a lot of the paintings that I have that are non-literal and not exactly figurative are somewhat surreal and I think the concert lighting even in these works makes them somewhat surreal um, Jim Henson is definitely a big influence of mine 
um, in terms of the Muppets and performance and color and the way that he conveyed universal joy and emotion, um, you know, like my interest in opera and things like that, the commonality is the simplicity of the human experience. Like we are very complex and we think we're so complex, but you know, at the end of the day, like the, the things that are expressed between like, yeah, let's say like the Muppets and opera or high literature are similar. Um, I liked that Jim Henson made things in colors. He made his puppets in colors that were not necessarily like race specific. And that was something in his biography that he talked about doing intentionally. So while you can definitely identify like people, quote unquote, like types of people in my paintings, I think like the concert lighting kind of takes that away in some ways. And like when I'm not sure, I like to make them kind of a, a, they're yellow or blue or green, you know, not so much as like black or brown or white or whatever. Um, that's something I enjoy mixing in. Uh, other influences, yeah, philosophy, food, um, sense experience. Um, I love victory. I love triumphant life story. I like uh, mystery and problem solving, you know, like when I'm painting, I think of it as kind of meta, um, micro, maxi, big, small, zooming in, zooming out, and there's like riddles to be solved, but also I try not to be too controlling, like it's a conversation between me and my painting. Um... What am I focusing on right now? I'm focusing on light, glazing, the way that I use the paint, um, playing with composition. Sometimes I, I work from images on the web, sometimes I work from pictures that I've taken, and then there's definitely a little bit of improvisation. And so I go into each piece differently. Sometimes I'm um, starting with a really literal, uh, drafting of an image onto something and then as it forms I leave a little more room for interpretation other times I'm painting in a sort of abstract way and then it becomes something and I like weave the images in together I guess like I I am the photoshop is the way that I feel in a lot of my paintings um and I like to put in different bits of symbolism that maybe didn't appear in the original image or that are coming from dreams or uh, different kind of things like that plants, nature, I like to weave those in even to, you know, into places where they don't necessarily belong. Um, Yeah, the biggest challenge of being an artist, I would say, is making time to support yourself and also keep your work free. Like, you can survive from your work sometimes, maybe, if you're lucky, but I think to create the work that I want to make it can't necessarily be tied to my survival. So having work that allows you time to make and not thinking about that when I go in to make work is really important to me. Um, Also not getting too like lonely or isolated or in your bubble in the studio. It's important to me to have company. Like my paintings take a lot of time. So I have to like be patient even though I can like hyper fixate like a dog with a bone. I'll want to just like work on something for a really long time. And then days go by and that's not necessarily a good way to work. So kind of trying to find balance. Um, It took me a really long time to find a sustainable lifestyle as an artist. And I think that's the biggest challenge so far. Um... What advice would I give to my younger self? I would say make more and don't worry so much. I was always like really kind of like, how am I going to figure this out? How am I going to survive? How am I going to get people to see my work? And I think it choked me like sometimes. So I think I would say just don't worry about it. Just make the work. Keep good company. Keep good counsel. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health and just keep making, 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 making. And just don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Make all the work that you can. Um, Unconventional mediums or techniques. 
I've tried, I've tried a lot of things. I mean, I've, I let myself kind of follow my curiosity, I think. So, I mean, I've worked with food, I've worked, made performances with dancers, I've worked with smells and installations and durational performance and painting with unconventional substances, like, that sounds um, potentially illicit. I just mean like coffee or things like that. Um, I still put things into my paint sometimes, which I like. Um, lately I've been putting Agua Florida in it and which is like a, something you find at bodegas here in, in New York that people use in different traditions to kind of dispel bad juju. And I tend to spray my paint to keep it wet. So sometimes I put that in there and it smells good while I'm painting. So I like that. Um, do you listen to any music or have any other type of background noise while you work or do you prefer complete silence? It really depends. Most of the time I like background noise. I often like will listen to movies or TV shows that I've seen a million times that kind of like give me the feeling that I want or keep me engaged while I'm doing the work. Um, sometimes I listen to podcasts. Sometimes I listen to books, audiobooks. Um, occasionally I like silence, but it's really only when I need to do something generally that's like really detailed. Um, it's like a toggle switch. I feel like, like I like to have something on that I can ignore. And then I like to have something on, I can pay attention to when I'm doing something that maybe doesn't require a lot of focus or if I'm just kind of working intuitively. Um, music is good sometimes sometimes I like to sing and dance while I work that happens and I usually don't notice until it's happening and then I'm like "Ooh, this is a good studio day the best reaction someone's ever had to my artwork um I like when people look for a long time I think that that makes me happy like recently I was in a show and there were people that kind of just stood in front of my painting for a good 20 30 minutes like a really long time and they came back they like got their friends and looked and stepped back and looked in and I I thought it was nice that they spent that that amount of time with it um yeah that's been my favorite what do I hope people take away from my artwork I'd like them to relate I think look at it and understand a feeling um and then if it applies to their own life and they have their own experiences, you know, like if my paintings can hit like a good song, that would be great. Um, yeah, so upcoming events are in the works. So you can find me at Kerry, K-E-R-R-Y dash C-O-X dot com. That's my website. And then you can sign up for my email and that will let you know what's going on or you can follow me at oi o i carry k e r r y um on Instagram that's oi like hi in Portuguese and i hope to see you soon thank you for listening <laughs>